CVO was really born out of the desire just to make the most ultimate custom motorcycle that we can as a company. Part of its ethos was to sort of challenge the rules. There's precedent to not only push the boundaries, there's also tremendous pressure and precedent to preserve what's great about our history and our past. Grand American Touring is a state of mind. It is the ultimate sort of aspirational act in motorcycling. It's this wanderlust in terms of trying to get over the next horizon. Grand American Touring is created by Harley Davidson. It's something that we invented just by the organic evolution of the motorcycles that we were producing over the years. By 1969, we have a batwing fairing, we have hard saddlebags. The bike started to evolve into bikes that were much more capable of traveling long distances, now known as the Grand American Touring Motorcycle. We've done a lot of really good things over these 120 years. At major points in the company's history, it's been about innovation, new models, new technologies that have really broken through. This is one of those moments for us. There's this idea that Harley-Davidson shouldn't change, but we wanted to have the confidence to move it forward. How do we take our most premium product, then take it to another level? What does the evolution of CVO look like? Instead of saying, why can't we? It's, why shouldn't we and what can we do? You know, one of the best things about designing or evolving an icon is that we have this incredible lineage. We've been perfecting it for at least five decades longer than any other nearest competitor. We know how to unlock this experience. And I think these new CVO Grand American Touring bikes are the ultimate aspirational pinnacle of that idea. CVO, custom vehicle operations. This is what defines premium. It's about mixing and blending design, styling, performance, technology, all into one Grand American Touring package. When you're talking about an icon, you're talking about customers' expectations. Every decision had to be weighed through, are we retreating to old ways of thinking because it's comfortable? Or are we truly thinking about how to improve the experience for our customers and making the right call here, even if it's a difficult one? We're moving into a space of, of dynamic capability and making a motorcycle that embodies everything that, that you can embody about a Grand American Touring motorcycle, but does it in a way that contemporizes the experience. The design process is a messy process, and we like it that way as designers because the expectations were Harley-Davidson silhouette. It's very well known. But in terms of what you do within those lines, there are a million decisions to make. When this is going down the road, it unequivocally has to look like a Harley. Paint and graphics, proportion, color, finish, the sound of the motor. You know, the target is really to design something that's going to have this emotional connection. We wanted everything about the visuals to convey this attraction that makes them want to get on and ride. You're trying to add a new skin, if you will, with a little more tension. Fairings are what we focus on initially. It's kind of the face of the bike. It's what creates the initial identity. That's where the design emphasis initiated was how to redefine reach the road glide and the street glide. In terms of signature design elements, obviously the lighting. I think a lot of people will call that out first. It's the first thing you see on the motorcycle. All of that technology has a purpose. We really wanted to illuminate more of the road so that we could all, as riders, ride deeper into the night. That was a very conscientious decision to wrap the lighting around the side of both fairings so that we could actually illuminate the side of the road. So these are two shapes that are, are probably the most recognizable shapes in, in motorcycling. What the lighting does for us now is it emphasizes that gesture and that package. Previously, it was just a, you know, a universal round headlight, which is a very classic, there's a motorcycle coming down the road, but now you're gonna have this eagle wing gesture that's coming at you. What we wanted to do was really create a synergy from front to back, to create a gesture that kind of tracks through the entire bike giving you the sense that as you walk up this bike, you can tell what it's meant to do. One of the features I think that is most noticeable is the bottom of the fuel tank. That tied the fairing to the saddlebags and to the top of the rear seat, connecting air between the front of the motorcycle and the rear of the motorcycle. When it comes to CVO, we touch everything, every detail, every finish. That's all to show a level of authenticity and craftsmanship. As you're going across the country on a motorcycle ride, you really start to feel the pressure points. We try to consider that with the way we design and stylize our seats. The bucket area is comfortable for the rider. It's got enough seat back to support the rider in their ride. 
It's a lot of decisions on what is the, the right shape to make it feel very comfortable to also look really premium and fast. Seeing if this piping lines up to the bike shape. Adding different textures, we want to get that color pop that matches the paint scheme. Even the stitch doing a French seam where your leg kind of lays on the seat is more comfortable than adding piping or decking. We make little decisions like that just to get these seats comfortable and, and looking top notch. There's an evolution of the motorcycle, but also like an evolution within the way we handle the paint graphics too on these bikes. So we got two versions of the CDOs this year, the dark platinum and then the whiskey neat. So we knew it had to be orange and black from the get-go. That was probably one of the first color decisions and graphic decisions we made. We actually have a, a two-layer paint. The mid-coat is a metallic orange, and then we add a tinted clear coat sun glow on top of that, and that just gives you even more depth to that color. The layout is designed in a way that celebrates the shape of the new bodywork. There's techniques within some of the custom airbrushing, the silver fade lines, the dark orange, the black to scallop effect that runs throughout the bike from tip to tail on both street glide and road glide. Then you might notice the tank badge and, and notice the chrome on that bike or the scorched chrome, which is our, our black chrome on the dark platinum bike. The 121 VVT powertrain is the highest performing engine we've ever delivered to a Harley Davidson touring motorcycle. We've got a great architecture starting point with the Milwaukee 8. It is fundamentally solid. But like any racer, you're always wanting more and more and more. We have added enhancements in just the right areas to continue to extract performance through variable valve timing, enhanced cooling, and other technical enhancements. Performance is sexy and fuel economy is responsible. This delivers both. VVT or variable valve timing, it's changing the valve timing based on RPM and based on the condition of the engine to really optimize air fuel delivery for power output. That's that torque that you feel at the rear wheel. We redesigned the entire upper end of this engine from cylinders to heads to our valve train to cams. It's all new, really trying to go after that refined power delivery and performance that our customers expect. We are constantly challenging ourselves to get more out of this powertrain architecture. You know, when you roll that throttle, the sound, the grunt, it just makes your blood and your adrenaline pump, and it's, it's just exciting. And this 121 engine, it does it. The CVO, Road Glide, and Street Glide have all stepped up a lot of things, uh, one of those areas being braking. We've gone now to uh, radio mount calipers, Brembo's on larger discs. If you look, it's basically a similar setup to what you're going to see on a race bike. The rear brake has also been upgraded in performance to, with a four-piston Brembo caliper on a large 300-millimeter rotor to provide confident braking. The front end goes to inverted forks, a much more performance-oriented setup. It's stiffer, it responds better. You can feel the dynamic performance. The suspension upgrades and tuning was spot on. The, the rider position and the comfort, you felt more engaged, you felt more confident. Increasing in the, the rear suspension travel, upping that 50% was the one best thing you could do to improve the comfort of the bike. How the bike is absorbing and isolating the rider. We wanted everything to just kind of disappear and just feel right. One of the first things that you want to look at to make a bike better, handle better, ride better, do everything better, is make it lighter. Every part we touched, we meticulously went after weight savings. What this leads to is about a 30 to 35 pound reduction in weight from our existing models. So on the new Street Glide and Road Glide CVOs, we have entirely new fairings, windshield designs, and they look phenomenal, but it's not just the look, it's also how they perform. What you wind up with is a bike that has less drag, so it can travel through the air more efficiently, faster or with less strain on your engine or better fuel economy. You have a rider that's sitting in a more comfortable position with airflow around them instead of through them. Head buffeting is reduced substantially by over 60%. That translates directly into comfort for longer hauls. And also you get a quieter experience when you're riding. And when you put everything together right, there's nothing better. And that's what we want to do as, as a team, as a group of engineers that are developing these bikes for our customers. We want to give them that. We want to give them that feeling that like, man, here you go. Take this, enjoy it, and ride like crazy. Prior to these new bikes, it's always been an analog instrument cluster, just the infotainment with Nav and some of your music. That's all together now. 
we now have the largest display of any touring motorcycle on the market. That 12.3 inch screen just lights up the cockpit. It really engages the rider with the vehicle, gets them to see everything in plain daylight, the contrast, the screens, the optionality that you can bring forward while you're sitting there riding is just phenomenal. This is the absolute pinnacle of where we are today with technology. It rivals the best electronics you would see in the automotive world. Skyline OS is a really exciting delivery for our vehicles. It's really the center of that rider experience for the new CVO Road Glide and CVO Street Glide. The touchscreen performance will operate in all weather conditions, whether it's rain, heavy glove, really to meet whatever you need. The new infotainment has three ride modes. It's touring, cruise, and sport. These ride modes are really the pinnacle of tailoring your ride and what you're going to go out and do that day. The CVO Road Glide and CVO Street Glide are equipped with Stage 2 HD performance audio powered by Rockford Fosgate. This includes two six and a half inch three-way speakers in the fairings and two five by seven three-way speakers in the saddlebags. It's so loud, you'll need to turn it down. When you put all those pieces together, you get a bike that feels natural, it feels intuitive, it does those things that you want it to. That's the part that people, when they ride a bike, they know it when they ride it. They get off a bike and say, wow, I don't know what it is, I don't know how to explain it, but it just feels right. Our riders have very strong emotional connections to our product and to our brand, and that all stems back to, you know, the experience they have when riding. That's where everything kind of clicks. I mean, if you think about the evolution of the bikes, all of the breakthroughs in terms of the capability of the motorcycle is really driven by rider interface and feedback from our customers. I, I think we've achieved the next historical move in our lineage. We have enhanced an already very refined and capable motorcycle. This is a culmination of countless hours of engineering, design, test, effort put into building these bikes and making these bikes. We're at the finish line here and we're ready to show the world and show the pride of this team and what that means to Harley-Davidson, how we drive that next chapter. There are a lot of different ways to get to the, the right Grand American touring motorcycle. And there's emotion and gut and instinct and feel. It's the idea of making sure that every decision has a dash of rebellion in it and every feature has a little dash of the history of our company. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to the same set of tools that the original designers who designed the first Harley-Davidson Touring Motorcycles used, is how does something make you feel? So, what do you think? Damn, holy shit.